I like this Always. service. Me and Alex are talking about that. Like, we feel like that's when we make it in life. Um, it's not Lord of Bell. It's our best defenders. I've been watching. This is not the same feeling you had. They're Batman friendly. I like this. I like it. Uh, hey, uh, culture, guys. Woo! I don't know where to begin. Let's start it. So last year, I was here at this retreat. We were in Kentucky. Matt Warner gave this presentation. Now, that was a All right? <laughs> Listening to Matt Warner, the king of culture, that's, that's, that's how he's known in our industry. I got to sit and listen to Matt Warner. All right? So I'm going to share some of what I heard, what I walked away with, because that particular segment was probably one of some of the biggest double nuggets that I took back to Jack's defense company, was listening to Matt talk about culture. So I, I have to relay. And I literally just got off the phone with Matt, and I said, hey, Matt, listen, hype me up. I need a, I need a, a little redose of this, you know? And hopefully he's tuned in. Did we get it? Did, did we Matt, get it? Matt is watching you right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to play this guy. Okay, one more time. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you. I have not been trained for this. <laughs> <laughs> Treat people the way they've never been treated ever. 
So Matt told this story last year, and this was a golden nugget for us, and we took it home, we did it. And the guys that worked for us, and this, this was happening at, at my place too, uh, showing up to work with tennis shoes, showing up to work in old shoes, boots with holes in them. Uh, and some of them literally, like, the soles are coming apart from the boot, right? And, and so Matt tells a story like, I, I, I need these people. Like, I don't want them to be here. I, 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 and I don't, I don't just, I don't want to force them. I don't want to punch them. I don't want to drive them. I want them to want to be here to do a good job. But at the feet, the, the, the bottom of your body, the foundation, if you're not comfortable, if your feet are wet, if your feet are hurt, the rest of your body is not going to feel good either. So Matt tells the story of how every year at Empire Net and Fence, everybody gets new boots. Nice boots, waterproof boots, leather boots, safety boots. Because they may not otherwise take care of the feet, you know? And so Matt's, Matt's literally saying, hey, I want to take care of your feet. And I'm going to do so by giving you a new pair of boots that's going to work here. You don't have to worry about having a hole in your boots. You don't have to worry about having wet feet. We're going to get you a nice pair of boots that I know are going to last. And in a year, we'll get you another pair. So we got to do that this year. That felt great. It felt great. Uh, and, and what we did, if you, if you got, this is like, this is one of those literal negatives, this is more figurative things as we go on. If you want to do that, this, I mean, your crew leaders probably have a credit card. They say, hey guys, they'll, they'll love this, I promise you. They loved it when I did it. Hey, take your team, buy a cavity, take them by Big Sport Reviews, take them by uh, Vincent Booth Bar. You gotta get some new boots, you know? Give them a little, it's like 250, whatever. Composite toe, steel toe, waterproof. That's, that's my only requirements. And you're comfortable. All that. Uh, in addition to, we were wearing, you know, tennis shoes, and our company is growing. So I don't know this. A lot of you guys know this. Uh, our company is growing, you know, and, and I, you know, part of part of being a fence company, uh, it's all about sales, and I want to sell ourselves as professionals, you know. Uh, I, I want that big job. I want to get the respect of the, the large contractor. I, I want all that stuff, you know. And I also want to be ready. And I'm like, hey, man, if you're showing up to work in tennis shoes, I know there's places, one, that we can't get. They require, you know. Two, I know that if something hits your toe, it's not going to be okay. And your toe's going to be hurt. Your foot's going to be hurt. That's not okay either. You know, I'm your leader. I need to make sure that we make this transition. So what we did is we made the transition all at once. So, hey, look, I'm going to wash your feet, and then you're not going to go back to tennis shoes, you know. Uh, so it was a double, double whammy, you know. Uh, but I also, I could come to you, you know, you wore tennis shoes and say, hey, look, by this date, I could have done that. I need you to just spend your money to have some boots, you know. That's just not how we wrote a Jack the Fence. I take care of the guys, you know. I need them, period. And they know I need them, you know, period. What's next? I have no idea, y'all. <laughs> Good hey, Good score. Thank you. Let's build the company and all that company to work for. 2016. Is when Jackson Fence Company was born. A little bit about me, just a very little bit about me. I was a, not a contractor. I, I never really built anything. I, you know, as a, as a typical kid, I had built some speaker boxes for my truck, you know. Like I built a little box of MDF wood, built some boxes, parked. That was like really the extent of my build, okay? Uh, August of 2016, my mom got me a $99 uh, you know, a little D-Walk drill and impact from the factory. My mom got me that for my birthday in August. In September, I was like, yeah, I'm starting fence company. <laughs> 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 that's, really how the, that's really how the transition kind of went. Uh, so my background, I work for Lowe's. Uh, I call it a corporate background because it, you know, I'm not a corporate guy like I wore a suit, you know. That's what people think when you hear corporate. But uh, it was a corporation. There was a lot of red tape, a lot of policy, a lot of do it this way, this way, this way. You know, I was a cog in the wheel. I had to execute my job their way. That's what it was. Part of my job was fences. Uh, I was like the liaison between the salesperson, the production office, the installer, and the customer. And liaison is a fancy word for I was caught up in the middle of a, a storm. People were shooting both ways, you know, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right? The salesperson screwed up. I had nothing really to do with that. The installer didn't show up. I had nothing really to do with that. The customer's confused. I had nothing really to do with that. And the install office 
doesn't have a clue. <laughs> and I'm in the middle of this. And again, I don't have a lot of build experience. I lost all the windows, the roofs, and that kind of stuff too. And I said, like, you know, I need to just do my own thing. But I'm not smart. I'm not smart. And so when I look at a window, I'm like, man, I don't really know what's going on between this side of the house and that side of the house. Well, there's a window there, but I know there's some other stuff in there, and I don't know what's going on. Right? <laughs> when I look at a roof, I'm like, well, I don't really know. First, I don't like pipes, and if I pull the shingles up, I don't know what I'm going to see under there. I, I don't know. There's an unknown, right? Fences. I'm like, damn, I think I can see the whole fence. <laughs> and so that's how we landed on Jackson's tents. I was like, let's do it. You know, six hundred dollars, literally, to my name, and a DMR drill. That DMR drill was like really important. <laughs> you know, uh, we went for it. So <clears throat> all these guys, they know that story. Okay, there's twenty-two of us. That's a few of them right there. Uh, this is after the day. Uh, look at what. Look at them. Very funny. Very funny. All the way down. This is after a day uh, they came into work. And it was literally raining all day long. <laughs> literally. And at the end of the day, I, I'm not ashamed to say it. Look, that's a bush light. Okay, that's a bush light. That's a bush light. Sometimes at Jackson Fence Company, we reward hard work. I'm not saying you go, to, go back and do that, right? But if grown men go out and kick butt in the middle of the rain and they get it done and they win and they all like bush light, you don't know what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, I don't know. But in moderation, right? That's right. Responsibility. Sean's drank with us at Jack and That's right. He knows. Had a good time with it. The boys know how to act, man. They're good. They're great guys, you know? So, but I want you to see. And this wasn't set up. This is what I know that. But look at the smiles on their face. And this is probably when they got a jacket on. Like they've been out there putting it in. They're muddy. It's like 5 in the afternoon, and I have a good time. So I love this picture because it's so real. This ain't the, this ain't the hey, let's all get our hair done and, and show up and do our hair shots. This ain't that picture. This is a whole different photo. But when I say let's go to the company we always want to work for, I, I see I got off. I got off. So I left Lowe's 2016. Brandon Innocent. He left Lowe's 2017. I worked at Lowe's for 10 years, he worked at Lowe's for 11. Okay, we had 21 years of misery. <laughs> no, we didn't know that. 21 years of Lowe's experience, all right? And so, but we left a lot, a lot for the same reason. We left because of the red tape. We left because, you know, we're, we're just a number. We left because we didn't feel valued. We left because we didn't really enjoy what we were doing anymore. And so I left, and he came behind me, and uh, Kristen was right there, and we, we made up, this is my wife back in the back corner. She's a little quiet, but she's here, all right? Until she's not quiet, yeah. just let you know. Yeah. Uh, I went to school for a long time, about six years, all right, to get business degrees. <coughs> Paid a lot of money for business degrees. You didn't have to do it. I'm going to tell you right now, you didn't have to do it. But one thing that always would come up, is a visual statement or a mission statement. And so we sat down to write, well, we got to have a mission statement. There'll be a mission we, we have to have a mission statement, right? And I talk about a guy with $600 and a drill, but no, no experience. So I'm kind of limited on what the uh, what the mission looks like, you know, really. But what I do know is I didn't like what I was doing. Brandon didn't like what he was doing. And we shared that for 21 years. And what we didn't know is we wanted to build the company that we always wanted to work for. And so we started that mission. That day. That's who we're going to be. And that's not change. That is always the mission. And so, like, in fine print below there, it says, if it makes sense, we're going to do it. Period. We were used to having to run stuff up the flagpole. Can we get approval? Can we not get approval? Like, it has to be right here. This place, this time, you know. We hated that stuff. If it makes sense, we're going to do it. That was the fine print. And when I said, when it says, we, that was important. It wasn't, you know, let's build a company that Canon envisions, that Canon dreams about, that Canon wants. It's, oh, let's build the one that we all want, right? <clears throat> I don't know if that's appropriate or not, but it's on there. <laughs> company uh, culture is not a buzzword. So the people, uh, it's, you can't just say, hey, we got culture. You can't just say, we got, you can't just, you can't just call everybody and pay your team members. There we go. 
it's way deeper than that. You know what I mean? Like, I like, I like Sean is always pushing us not to say employees, but to say team members, right? But it's not the word that makes the difference. It's the, it's the activity, it's the action, it's the verb, it's the relationship, it's the, it's the momentum, it's the results. That's what really makes the difference. Uh, so please understand it's not just something you say and you have. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of intentional doings. It's a lot of ups and downs. So what is company culture? Company culture goes both ways, you know. You know, I think that should be uh, highlighted to you. It's like, hey, he's got culture. I'm like, well, yeah, it sucks, <laughs> you know. Or, yeah, it's great. Like, that's, you have a culture at your company regardless. You know, whether it's bad or good, you have it, period. So, I wish it would say good culture, John. <laughs> it's not good. But the definition of uh, company culture is the sum of your formal systems, the sum of your informal systems, your behaviors and values, and all of these create an experience for your employees and customers. And to keep that simple, bro, uh, company culture is the, is the way that people feel when dealing with your company. This means every company has culture, most of them suck, right? <laughs> Sam, you're really wearing it, bro. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for places to put that in. You know? So, At the end of the day, it's all about how people feel. And it's not just your employees. It's how the people on the outside feel as well. Before we go with this, there we go. You cannot minimize your customers and have a good culture. So I want to hang out here a lot. I think, Sean hates the word impossible, but I'm going to say this. I don't think it's possible to have crappy customer service and have a good culture. It's not possible. It's not. A lot of times we put stuff, we make stuff difficult sometimes for our customers. We want to fight with them. Somebody asked me earlier about the permit, you know. Well, how do you handle permits? You bank card, you know. I'm like, hey, look, man, if it's the $29 thing, just do it. Try to put that on there as a line on it. Hey, we took care of that for you. We added value to the bill. We're doing this for you. I'm like, let's not fight with the customer. Let's make it, let's make it an awesome experience. Let's be the professional. Let's take care of of business. And I don't feel like you can, you can treat your customer bad. I don't feel like you can argue with them. I don't think you can say, well, I hear what you're saying, but let me show you this company account right over here to show that you're wrong. Like, it's not really a fight, you know what I'm saying? Most of the time, I mean, sometimes there's a fight that needs to be fought, you know? Most of the time, we have an opportunity in front of us to write good last chapters. It's good to be upset with us. I love saying that. Like, if something didn't go as planned, which happens, Oh, it happens all the time. Stuff doesn't go the way it's supposed to go. We're humans. But we also get opportunities along the way to write the last chapter. I built the pen for Chris. Chris doesn't write the pens. This isn't right. I show up the next day and I'm like, hey, man, we're going to make this right. I see what you see. Also, I see this. You didn't mention that. We're going to fix that too, Chris. And now we're in charge of that last chapter. And I feel like it's important that we empower our team around us to think like that. <coughs> if I have to tell Sam and Tilla, hey, look, man, tell that guy to get out of here. Sam's like, well, I don't want to do that. You know? It's not my, it's, it's not my money, but I'm just caught up in the middle. Like, me, but low, I was caught in the middle of all this crossfire. You know? Boom, 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 boom. If I make Sam be the defensive lineman all the time for every real thing that happens, Sam becomes miserable. You know, that's, that sucks. That's why we would say That's why it sucks. <laughs> But I'm putting him in an uncomfortable situation where he feels like he can't win. And naturally, our, our, the human body, there's chemicals. Uh, there's a guy named Simon uh, Sinek, something like that. Yeah, and he's talking about his chemicals. I don't mean that. I, I don't know all names, but it's the chemicals. It's in our bodies. And I can't control it. It's there. But I, what I do know is <laughs> human touch. Like if, I wake out, if I walk out here and shake Andrew's hand, there's a chemical reaction that happens. It makes me feel good. It makes him feel good. We just, we just built some trust right then and there. Also, when I do something kind, when I open the door for somebody, when somebody drops something, I'm like, hey, man, I got it. And I pick it up and I hand it back to them. There's a, there's a little uh, release of some kind of chemical that makes us feel good, you know? Don't me, right? I wanted to say, but I didn't want to be wrong. I said, hey, is that a drug? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> 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 I, I was. I was like, ah, that's not. 
What a guy is also going to make the same mistake that Travis just made, and he didn't have an opportunity to learn from. You know? And that would also have a, a real scary environment. So, hey, man, what happened to the last guy? Oh, man, he did a mistake in the fire. Oh. <laughs> Trust. But you got to have it. Uh, I don't know what's up with that one. <laughs> Empowerment. Uh, hey, just like we talked about Sam, empower your team to make decisions, to, to, to be, be a hero. Empower your team to represent your company. You know, when I go out, I don't, I don't want to fight with people. I'm not a fighter. You probably, you probably guess that. I don't know. My guess, oh, that guy's always smiling and cutting up. He's probably not scrapping. You know, I'm not. You know, I don't want to cut up with you. Break a beer with you. That's me. Empower your team to be the same guy. Some way, somehow. Like, like, let them be who they are. Let them be a hero. That feels good. Values. Who is your company? Where's your company going? What do you stand for? That's what they say the why. People don't want to. They, they don't want to know what you need them to do. They don't want to know why. So, what does your company stand for? If it's hard for you to answer that question, like at the end of the day, you know, you build great fences, right? Beyond that, what do you stand for? What's your plus one? If it's if you have to think, damn, what's my plus one? The guy and the team that surrounds you, they don't have a clue. Accountability. I think oftentimes, go back to Lowe's, I was working at Lowe's and uh, probably around 2014, like they kind of had this idea of like, hey, we should really work on our customer experience. I was like, damn. A great idea. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, super late to the party. I was like, I told you. you know? <laughs> and we should work on our culture. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we should. We got all that stuff. Made to the party. And nothing against Lowe's. Like, I, this, this is not bad at all. But it wasn't well executed, okay? And I was I was in a management position when Lowe's went through this like, little, like a, like a rebrand or like a, it was like an internal rebrand, right? And, Basically, what happened is they, they came around and put kid gloves on everybody. Like when they say when I say kid gloves, it's like, oh, it's okay. You might do all that stuff. I, I understand. You got busy, you know. And so we couldn't manage people anymore, you know. And so we went from like a uh, uh, a results-driven company to a very soft and like the result doesn't even matter company. And I want you to know that having a good culture does not mean that you got to go to work and you got to wear kick gloves and you can't hold people accountable. People want to be held accountable. People want to know that they're not doing things right. People want to know that they are doing things right. People want feedback, just like you want feedback. You know, Jacob's not his head right now. That feels good. That's feedback. Jacob's listening to it. I like it. Well, the people that are at work, they want feedback. Am I doing it right? Am I not doing it right? Do I think I'm going to keep my job? Do I think I might get a raise? Do I, am I going to work here for a year and not get feedback and then not get a raise because I wasn't doing it right the whole time? And he never told me I wasn't doing it right. Where am I at with this? You know? <sighs> Accountability goes two ways. Oh, 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 oh. I should have had a, 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 like a buffer on that. Uh, it's all good. Starbucks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to tell you one, one more thing and then we'll, 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 we'll fly through this little part up here. Uh, Kristen's dad, his name is Greg, he told me one time, actually when I was getting promoted to manage the Lowe's, I moved from Tennessee to Illinois, and I was, it's all right actually, but it's like, man, why did I do that? You know? <laughs> but I was moving, and, and getting a promotion. And what I like about Lowe's is every time we moved, I moved a few different times to different stores, you know. Every time you move to a different location, you're given another chance. So like, Reinvent yourself. You know what I mean? Like, hey man, I wasn't really affected because me and these four guys here, we became two buddy buddy. So now we're going to meet these other guys. And they don't know who I am. And I'm going to be nice to them, but we're going to work differently. You know, so you have to learn lessons and then flip over and manage differently, lead differently. You know? So, anyways, uh, when I was moving to Quincy, Illinois, I, was, I talked to her, her dad, Greg, and I said, hey, you know, you have any pointers for me? And I'll never forget this, and I've shared this a whole lot of times. This, this, is, this is the golden method of this whole episode here. He said, look, son, he said, when, when you're in a leadership position, you need to understand. 
and he used the illustration of a janitor. Okay? <coughs> you cannot make anybody do anything. You can't make Andrew do anything. I can ask him to, but like, if I'm like, hey, Andrew, I need to go clean that toilet, I can't make him, I can't make him. That's, that's, that's not possible. I can't make him go out there and clean the toilet. <coughs> However, what you can do is you can make people want to work for you. You can make people want to work with you. And when you begin to figure that out, you have all of it. <coughs> so when people, when, if Andrew wants to work for me, my hand is this. You got a problem with the bathroom. You got a break in your neck. You think you can clean that up? Andrew might go out there and clean that thing up so good that he might say, you can't clean this toilet. No cleaner than it is right now. When you have that kind of loyalty, they'll do stuff like that. Like, hey, look, this, this jumper is clean. Like, you, you can't polish it no more than it's polished. I promise you, everybody come in and try it. You can't beat it, you know? That's the kind of uh, feedback and the kind of team that you want to build, you know? Starbucks. You work at Starbucks, didn't you? Yeah, did you not say that? I thought you said you used to work at Starbucks. No? Oh, a Starbucks warehouse. Damn. <laughs> 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 What's that called? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I look, so, so I'm going to just show you a few, a few organizations that, that have a uh, pretty, pretty good culture. Uh, I was a barista. I, 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 I lived that life uh, for about a year, not long at all. Uh, I was an assistant manager for Lowe's, working about 55 hours. I was also uh, pouring espresso shots for about 20 hours. And I did that because in my school, uh, we studied all these different companies, a ton of companies. Starbucks came up a lot, you know. And I met a guy and wrote a book called the Starbucks Experience, and I was like, I was so fascinated by it, I wanted to learn more about it. And so I literally went and got a job at Starbucks to learn more. I ended up being hired folks, we got a started, and designed my freaking apron, for love it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Starbucks has, has core values uh, to, 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 to build a culture. Uh, you know, they, they, they give health benefits, you work 20 hours, you get you're treated like a full-time employee. They don't call them employees. They don't call them team members. They call them partners. I always thought that was kind of cool, too. Uh, Zappos. You may know this brand. So everybody is, is like, another buzz. I heard Sean say the other day, I say it too. I heard Joe ever say the other day, hey, I'm a service company. We just sell pins, right? Zappos, like, said that, like, 15 years ago. Hey, we're a service company. We happen to sell shoes. One thing that Zappos does, they look for people when they do interviews. They do two interviews. They do a like a talent interview, like a like a um, you know skills interview, and they do another interview to to determine how you're going to fit in the culture. And part of that interview, the culture part, is they they ask how weird are you on a scale of one to ten? How weird are you? And they want you to be kind of weird. Like they want you to be not normal. But they also want to be crazy like lunatic weird either. But they want to, they want to mild, they, like, seriously, they look for a weirdness. And then, if you pass those two interviews and you're weird enough and not too weird, they hire you. <laughs> and they let you work for two weeks. And after the two weeks, uh, kind of similar to an exit interview, when you leave a company, they want to talk to you, they want to say, hey, we appreciate your service, but give us some feedback. After two weeks, they come to you and they want feedback. What do you think about it? And after the feedback, they also say, hey, look, I'll give you $2,000 right now to leave. New employees are offered $2,000 after two weeks to leave the company. The buyer. If you don't want to be here, we don't want you here. And what they find is, that people, some people do take the offer and they leave. But they also find that people that stay are more motivated. They're more committed. Because now they've given up something. And so we don't want that. We're going to stay. And you start building a team. I think that's pretty powerful. They also do things like, uh, so Sam, Sam buys shoes from me. He has 365 days of return. He might not fight with you. He might be bloody and tore up. I see the first, I see the transaction. Sorry, he didn't like the shoes. So whoever has to facilitate that, they don't have to, you know, fight people all the time. Like, yeah, you know, it's actually, you know, 12 months at the end of the day. It ain't like that. They're probably giving money back. They also surprise their frequent customers with free overnight delivery. 
So you go and you buy shoes, put them in your shopping cart, you're expecting them to come four or five days, and they're like, ah, overnight. And bad boys will be there nine hours. You don't know what's coming. But it's the customer experience. And I'm telling you, like, you cannot have a good culture if you don't have a good customer experience. And that has to be a focus. They go hand in hand. Southwest Airlines. <clears throat> this company here was, was literally built around the culture of their team. Uh, I don't watch the news a whole lot, but I've like I heard like little things in the news. I don't know how things are going with them. Really, I really I don't. Uh, but I read all the book. Kirk Keller, he was the CEO, founder. I read it. And some of the principles he had, never lay somebody out. Never lay your team off. Ever. Figure it out. Figure out how to keep them. <coughs> and to talk about when the, you know the market crashed 2008 and how things weren't going smoothly, how they how they were the only airline to not lay people up. They were able to keep it up, the whole entire team, and keep it going. <clears throat> Another one of their core principles that I love, and I think we can all take this home too, treat your vendors well. Teach your team how to treat your vendors well. No matter how your vendor relationship looks, it all starts the same. You're going to Home Depot. You're dealing with somebody at the desk. You, know, you might buy, buy the job, go do your job, and get some stuff to return. Hey team, let's, let's stack this up nice again. And when we go return this stuff, we can return it with pride. Hey look, we just don't need this right here. It's, it's perfect, it's stacked up. We just need a fork it. It'd be so easy to take it off, set it down. Make your job easy, let them know that you appreciate them, and that comes back to you. But teach your team how to do that too, you know? Teach your team, like, it ain't okay to like, treat the lows and holy like crack, man. Like, we need those people. Show them some respect. Chick fil A. We all know about Chick fil A. Uh, what was it say? Uh, 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 yeah, thank you. Who said that? Yeah, I was like, yeah, my pleasure. So, you know that's not even a company requirement to say that? You would think, because they all say it everywhere you go, that that's a requirement. But it's not. It's just a, it's a contagious thing. I mean, because so many are saying it, you go get a job, they're not, they're not going to tell you to say that. But everybody around you saying it, and then you start saying it. And it's like so consistent because you can go anywhere. Just say thanks. Just say like, thank you. This is here. This is it. Thanks. My legend. Like they never fail. But that's not even a requirement of the company. You know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> Who's ate at uh, Chick-fil-A in the last month? Two months. Who's ate at Popeyes in the last two months? A lot less hands. <laughs> 2019, you guys remember the chicken sandwich fight? <laughs> 2019, I don't know if you guys remember exactly what happened, but they, they launched a sandwich that was supposed to be better than Chick-fil-A sandwich, supposed to be better than any other chicken sandwich in the freaking world, right? It was so good, planned or not, we don't know, they ran out. And they went away for like three months. And people were literally driving to uh, uh, Popeyes to find out they chicken sandwiches on the back, on the back. So much so that they actually started putting signs on the door. Chicken sandwiches not in stock. And then they came back, and this was, this was the ad they ran, I'm back. And some of the locations even started putting in a, uh, a second drive through just for the chicken, like a, a chicken sandwich line. You got, the, you, got, you got the regular folks and you have the chicken sandwich folks before you in, right? <laughs> <clears throat> and, and, and Popeyes is killing it, okay? These guys right here, however, they hold the title. <coughs> this right here, this crazy, that's what, that's what a clever marketing budget, a clever marketing team will get you. And it gets you short term hype. Everybody wanted to try it. We went to try it. Me and Kristen went to try it. I don't know that we can make the or, or pop out a sip that day. You know? But every, it was the hype was so 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 much that we had to go try it ourselves. Now we don't care. You know what I mean? It was short lived. The culture wasn't there. The customer service, the experience, it's not there. We got a Chick-fil-A and it's always not pleasant. See the difference? It's, it's, it's culture, man. It's leadership. This company here is built on Christian values. I don't know about the other company, but it shows. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to you know preach Christianity, Christian, Christianity to you, but they have a lie. They have values. They have a, they have a mission. 
you know? And it shows. This company here, they spent a lot of money in the chicken sandwiches. And I saw the hands. Y'all didn't see the hands. Like These guys from New Hampshire, they, they like Popeyes. <laughs> you want that? That was just at the airport. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, y'all like it, y'all. Like, it was like, it was like a hand here, a hand here, like boop, 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 boop. But <laughs> 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 well, y'all just hit it recently on the way there. Yeah. All right, so take that out of the equation when it's the last time. See, nobody's even thought about this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions around the world? We might not have a lot of time, do we? You're out. Go into the KPIs. <laughs> All right, hey, what time we got, Chris? What's up? Not safe. Yeah, 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 I got you. We're not going to roll. 326. Okay, all right, yeah. All right, key performance indicators, also known as KPIs. It's exciting, exciting, exciting. Ah, oh, look at you. I was the creator of this QR code. Oh, you were? Oh, man. Oh, look, we might come oh, back. Oh, great. You know, wait, 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 wait. Listen, this is not that old. It ain't that serious. It ain't that serious. We're on time, thank you. I'm having to drop stuff right now. So, all right, I'll show you. Go ahead. You win with. All right, everybody got it? Five, four, three, two, it's you, one. I don't know. I think it's two. What? Is that the number? Is that that one? I got it. Yeah, oh, there goes. Choose her. Yay. Android user. All right. Two things. Go fast. We got to move, okay? So, here's two things. All right. 2020. I met Sean King right here. All right. So, we'll just see this real fast. 1.2 million. Uh, 21, 2.3, 2.2, 2.6. This year, 4.2 is what the plan is, right? Boom. So, just. So just know that's that's my that's my testimony real quick to shop. Okay. So I also want you to know this too. Man, this is this we're talking about KPIs. This is not really KPI, but it is. Everything's about indication. Like, is a KPI? Hell yes, KPI. Alright, so look. <laughs> look, this year, in January, seventy nine thousand dollars got six point one eight six 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 point eight ten percent of our revenue. Twenty one, five point five, twenty two, five point seven eight. My three-year average of January 5.82. Now I know. Now I know. If we're planning on doing this, well, we're going to talk about that later on with the budget sheets. But if we're planning on doing this, and the budget sheet already tells us information anyways, we need to do this in January based on historical freaking information, right? So, why is that important? I'm going to tell you something. Go back to Lowe's. I learned a lot from Lowe's. I, I got to meet a lot of people, a lot of different teams, a lot of different departments. I'm going to tell you something. When you're tacking stuff, it just like it's almost like magic. You just like boom, we hit it, we hit our goal. We got our goal, we're gonna track the goal. Hey, what? We did it. We freaking got the goal. You know, like I'm sure there's times when we don't, but that doesn't happen. What we measure improves. What we measure report and report improves exponentially. Exponentially, right? So I say this because now we have a plan. We have the 247.42. God, I'm not sure, but it's like January the 11th right now, right? That is an indicator. These first 11 days of work that we've had is an indication of how we're going to do in January. Already. I'm already knowing this information. That's an indicator. And if you're not thinking like that, you're, you're, you're liable to miss the boat. It's my opinion. And people will say, well, we hope to do $5 million a year. We hope to do $12 million a year. We hope, we hope, we hope. And I'm like, hey. It's already January 11th. How are we doing? We should already kind of have a pulse on that. Now, and so what we do in our company, we take that 247, silence the opportunities. I love that word. Four crews, four days a week, four times four is 16. 16 times four is 64, right? You can cover that, wouldn't it? <laughs> so we get 64 opportunities in the month of January. I also know that I need a couple of buffers in there because things don't go as planned. We have a warranty, we have a callback, we have a, uh, a, a sweet little old lady that I just can't help tell no that we're just going to go do whatever for her because we want to go do it. We're flexing. That's what we're going to do, right? So we're going to have buffers in there. So I don't quite have 64 opportunities. I'm going to say, hey, let's, let's plan for 60. That gives me four buffers. I don't want to redline us. 
Because then everybody's stressed out. And then we can't go fix the stuff that we messed up. We can't be the hero. We want to be the hero, right? So let's, let's put some buffer in there. And so, I take that 247, divide it by 60. All right, boom. We gotta be doing this much per chart per day, right? And so we start building a schedule out. We're, we're, we, we know this information. We already hit the map to success. And then <clears throat> we, we put it in the first week, the first four days. What's that total? Bam, we're above, we're beaten track. We take 247, or, or, or yeah, 247, we divide that by four weeks. And now we know what we get each, each week. And the goal is, hey, let's beat it. Let's beat the first week. The goal is, let's beat the second week. Let's build a trend, you know? And once I get like 10 jobs or 10 days scheduled, <clears throat> I'll take those 10 days. That's how much I got scheduled. Divide it by 10. That's how much we're trending. I get uh, 54 more opportunities. Minus 4, 50 more opportunities still. Wow. <coughs> Times this trend. Hey, baby, I know we're going to make this month. You know? Let's start looking at February. That's how it works. That's just opportunity management. So, why did uh, a KPI? It's a KPI because every day it's an indicator of how we're doing. We're 10 days into the year. And I can already tell you, we're on track. You know? We're not just saying, hey, we hope to do another 600 pounds this year. I'm telling you, hey, all the signs right now point to yes. We're on track. We're 10 days in. I know it's not a whole lot, but we're not losing, you know? Any questions on that? We got time. Good. <laughs> 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 all right. Hey, this is the Matt Warner. I hope, hey, Matt. Where you at? Saturday morning, <laughs> he taught me this uh, last year. Uh, actually, after the retreat, he taught me how to do this. So Saturday morning, so we all know the same thing. Like we're all busy throughout the week. There's a lot of fires, a lot of, uh, a lot of distraction, a lot of activity, a lot of phone calls and stuff, right? The quietest time for me that I found is on Saturday morning. You'll probably agree that Saturday morning is kind of quiet for you too. So we have a Saturday morning routine. What else do you want to do? You need some kind of routine. You don't need to sleep in until o'clock when you get up and do something. It has to kind of routine, just like the rest of the week. So Friday, Sheena, that's our, uh, I call her right here. She, she manages our office, knows all the information. Knows way more than I do. Sheena, hey, Friday, I need you to send me an email. Every Friday. Preferably after 12, because after 12, you probably have time to put in all the information in your QuickBooks. You know, all the receipts, any kind of invoice that we're still doing. <clears throat> Not, don't do it Friday morning, do it Friday afternoon. We've got things kind of settled for the week, right? Send me an email. I want to know. Uh, this is, I'm going to go back and I don't know why I do it this way. I want to know first what's on your mind. Like, what's, what always we look like? What do you think? What's the big picture? In your world, I want to know because you're managing the office. You're seeing all this movement. What do you see? Just tell me. This is your, this is your, your little canvas to tell me what's going on. Second thing, I want to see, type that, even though it's here, what everybody's credit card balance is. It doesn't take a long to know this information. It's canon. Kristen, David, Brian, do, 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 boom, 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 boom. I can look at once. And our goal is to pay them all off every Friday. You know, that's our goal. Run through the week, pay them off Friday. You know, that might be a bit aggressive. I don't know. This is what I like. I don't like people being at the gas station. We can't get gas with the car back. So I hate that. Uh, also, uh, what's the bank account got in it? Like, tell me what that, that number is. And again, I'm going to see it on another report. So I like this. Open my email and, like, kind of high level stuff here, right? How much is in the bank? How much is going to be over credit cards? What are you thinking? Boom. Cool. Real short sweet, right? And then I want you to PDF these attachments to me. Pull up the QuickBooks. Send me the balance sheet. Send me their account receivable summary. <coughs> send me the accounts payable detail. And so we'll talk about the cash flow uh, worksheet, right? And this is kind of like a miniature version of that. This is what I'm looking at every every Saturday morning. Uh, I pull this up. Uh, I, I like paper, I like digital stuff, I like paper too. I pull this up, I hit print, print, print. I pull all these things out, I lay them down, you know? And so what am I looking at? I'm looking at, you know, hey, where's our equity at? I look at it, why too much? You know, is it growing, is it straight? Or how are we, what's, what's the need, you know? I also look at our uh, accounts receivable. Who owes this money? The name of the game is, is, is get paid before 90 days. That's my name, that's my name, right? So we got a, a 0 to 30, a 30 to 60, a 60 to 90. Once you hit that uh, 60, 90 mark, I take over. I'm writing you a card. You know, I'm writing something. Hey, Cannon here, you got one. See, you text us. Hey, Cannon here, I really need your help. You know, that works. Like when, when somebody different reaches out in a different format, a different way, people like that, it's fine. You know, on a Saturday, they'll go to the same website, pay their bill online, boom, done. Let's move on, you know. But if you don't know who's on your money, uh, 
that's stuff can linger out, you know, and you're gonna you're gonna need a loan or something, you're gonna need something, and they're gonna they're gonna say, hey man, uh, send me these supports. And one of them means the freaking receivables. Damn, I need to explain this one, I need to explain this one, I mean, you know, you don't want to explain a bunch of stuff, like pick up as much of that stuff as you can. You're gonna have retainers, you're gonna have, you know, mad debt, you're gonna have stuff on there, but pick up as much of it as you can to let them know that hey, we have a really good chance of collecting our bills. <coughs> you know? Uh, accounts payable, detail report. That just shows like every every invoice ever good that we've entered, uh, how much is it, when is it due, and and we 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 take pride in paying our bills on time. You know I don't want vendors to wait. It wasn't always that way. So like now that it's that way, I'm like hey I'm not gonna mess that up. You know they used to, have to call me like hey man uh, it counts up there past due. <coughs> you check you know okay now we're on time though. You know what I mean? So we're sending them a check ahead of time, right on time, just in time. You know uh, but I'm looking at the stuff. And this is just a management technique with all it is. I'm not writing the checks. Uh, I do I do some receivables though when I get out there, like, hey, all right, let me, let me contact you. I'll, maybe I can pay you, you know? And I have a pretty good uh, closure I didn't pay, so. Any questions on this? Everything? That's a Saturday morning routine. I'm moving fast here. <coughs> all right, so companies here. Um, we got Good Shepherd in the house. We got High Steel in the house. We got DMT in the house. Jackson Fence, Mr. Fence. So, uh, Ryan, you remember a couple couple weeks ago, I, I, I shot you a text message. Remember that? Yeah. And I said, hey, Ryan, what's your, uh, how much revenue are you doing per employee, per team? And he shot it off fast. Well, yeah, you stuff. <laughs> and then we had to subtract for subcontractors. We did that real fast, too, you know? Uh, Chris Gill gave me that information. Shane gave me that information. Uh, so, KPIs, paid performance indicator. Uh, guys, you know, it's kind of impossible because we're all private companies to really know uh, the truth because we, we measure things differently. If we're all public companies, we have to measure things the same way, and then we can really compare some, some information. But the best we can do is know that you're tagging it in a way and reporting it in a way, and, you know, we got some ammunition, you know. But these, if you guys agree, uh, I think this is a pretty good pool. Pretty, pretty, this, is, this is a pretty admirable list. I'm like, hey, I'd like to be in that circle, you know. So, revenue per team member, what do you guys think it is? Alright, so, I have reason to believe, I think a good <coughs> goal, anything 225 or better, I think you're going to do. Out of the companies you saw that I polled, this was the average. <laughs> and it's always a mean, a median, a mode, there's different ways of finding averages. This is me taking 11 companies, add, 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 divide by 11. That's how you get there. I don't know which one that is, whether it's a mean or a median or whatever, but that's how that, what is that called? Mean. Mean? Yeah. <laughs> but there's modes, I mean, there's different ways of doing that, right? There's different ways. There's some, some guys are going here. Let's see, look here. These guys are going heavy, right? But I think if you do a different way, you might see that number be bigger. You know, I don't know. I didn't really catch it in the math. I'm glad you did. I think it was probably fair. So we had companies that reported anything. Guys, look, from 185, so that was the low end, to 270, that was the high end. And I, I had reason to believe that all those were pretty accurate. I, I, I think they didn't do this wrong. Uh, that's, that's quick and dirty. Uh, a more accurate way, Sean and I discussed. Go ahead. What did you mean by subtract or subcontract? All right, so, great question. So, you don't know, if you're writing a subcontract, you don't know how many people were on that group, right? So, what we did in, in, in Ryan's case is we said, hey, man, how much of that revenue that we're talking about was performed by subcontractors? And so, once we do that revenue, we subtract that total revenue dollar out. So, now we look at the different revenue, we take that revenue and we divide it out by history. But when you're writing subs, you might have a two guy, two man crew, a three man crew, a four man crew, you don't really have any control of that, you're paying them on the job. You don't care either, you know, just go do the job. So when I say subtract the, for the sub, I'm saying take the revenue that was performed by subcontractors, throw it in the trash, you know, we can't really do much with it, and then take the revenue that's up over and divide it by the team, you know. So, uh, Sean, hey, let's, let's do it this other way too. I don't think I have a slide for this. Let me see what's next. No, I didn't. Uh, let's do it this other way too. Let's take all, you know, so they're quick books, book, and payroll summary, how you do this for the year. But at the very end, 
Get all your hours work, total hours work. You're gonna have salary people in them. Yep, salaries. Mm -hmm. So assign, you know, these guys here, they might all be salary. 40, 40, 40, 40. You know, add that in. That's 2,080 hours for the year. So we take all of our salary or our hourly rates, and we add however many salary people we got to. Take our revenue and we divide it by all those hours. So I was at 96, <coughs> I was at 95, and we saw people from what, 90 to 107? Ish. We saw as low as 70 and as high yeah. as 120. Yeah. Is that I, was right? one, I was 140. 140, but the thing about it is, is that we have to have a common denominator in that, in that equation to compare the data. So if you have an owner operator company that's doing less than a million, and you're trying to compare that to an entrepreneur <coughs> company that's doing 5 million, right? Two totally different things. Sorry. Also, you got to look at the life cycle, the current journey of that company. So if you're in a massive growth mode, when we talk about overhead here and revenue, when you start changing this, you're going to be a higher number of revenue per man hour. Okay? And on the other scale, the other end of the scale, you'll be very low revenue per man hour as you're scaling up. So it's not going to be consistent. So you have to compare data with those that are living the same journey as you are with some more structure to say, hey, you're high. You're low. Right? But it was really cool to see the parameters. And I can almost pick out, there's a few that I sent messages to, and I said, uh, double check your numbers. And they were off. I mean, how can I do that? We were able to do that by looking at global averages and say, yeah, I don't think you accounted for this, did you? No, I didn't. Uh, Makes sense. It's, very, it's more accurate. This is, this is down and dirty, okay? Yeah. But this is huge. Because you could have a team member work half a year. How do you count that? Right. Would it be able to work two thirds of a year? Right? How do you count that? How does that quantify this? This is picture perfect if you have 22 people, start to finish. That doesn't happen. You could take your hours, you get, you know, 6,000 hours or 6,000 hours, you have 6,000 60, hours. And 60,000 hours. So divide that by 40, or 2,080 rather, and then you'll find, hey, well, this is this many people, you know, they're on the right? Yeah, so. but the most detailed way to break that down is to literally take your total number of man hours, right, and your total revenue, and that is about the bottom dollar Lowest common out there you could possibly get to. Stay with me, boss. So we're at 140, but I still don't know is that good, bad, am I in trouble? Am I doing great? So it means that for every person, every hour of your company working, you're bringing 140 bucks. That's good. The lower the number, that means you're bringing less money per man hour working. You've got to pay for that man hour, right? That man hour might cost you 20 bucks, 40 bucks. I don't know. If you're only making 70, hmm. If you're paying 20 or 30 and getting 140, you're pretty good. That means that you're well over the machine really lean. The higher the number, the leaner you are. The lower the number, the fatter you are. But Look. I'll tell you what, though, I don't feel like a well oiled <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're tired, man. That's why you're nervous. You're, you're, you, how, many, how many hours do you spend welding gates? Every time I see you going live, you're welding gates. You're out there working, you're driving. What, I hear, what I hear from Josh is hey, you could probably have a few people. That's right. That's what I hear. Hire a welder. I would love to fire yourself. Hey, it's not always you black and white. It's not always black and white. Well, Sam sucks. <laughs> Sam sucks. Uh, <laughs> all right, everybody can get on this here. So look, this is, these are just some key points, guys. Uh, everybody wants to know, hey, how do I stack up? Material costs. We find that 45% should be on the high end. Uh, I think good companies, 40, sometimes 35. So I'm talking much, just say yes or no. It, it depends on the company. That's right. <laughs> 35 to 45 is, is what I see. I talk to a lot of people too, but that's like, yeah, I see that is like, that's, that's healthy. You know what I mean? Uh, and when I say healthy, again, there's no black and white, good or bad. But some of these companies that you saw on the front slide, you know, they're 45% of the Okay? You just know that. When you're, when you're trying to quit a job, and I found too, like, we, that's a KPI too. When we fit out a job, we have a, we use a different, way of doing this, but it shows me immediately when we figure that job, what the material percent is. And so that's that's just a red flag. It's, it's, it's an indicator. It's all it is, an indicator. Okay, well, everything looks right. Hour is good. Material percent, 64 percent. That's a red flag. Something like, something like right. Back up, you know. And I also believe that I could almost take a job and just figure out the materials. Let's say this material is ten thousand dollars. What is forty five? What's what? What is ten thousand dollars? Forty five percent of. And I feel confident enough I can send that bid out. 
And what do you get? Yeah. Thousand percent. That's the advantage of using division and knowing your numbers. You can literally take the tail stops, forget about labor, divide by point four five. That works. That price. works for me. You'll be different, right? But I'm just saying, like this is a uh, that, That's a fair sign. That 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 less than sign is, is the fourth. Okay. <clears throat> Direct labor costs. Some of this stuff, I guess, that's I ain't lying to you. So we'll see how that goes. Twenty fourteen percent. I talked to enough people that I feel like. There's some healthy companies out here that may be even less than that. Ryan, you all want to share? You know, top of the head? 12 to 14 percent, that's what I see a lot. Uh, I find a lot of companies pushing 20 percent in that journey of switching to a lean being an entrepreneur like spare business. You can get down below 12 and you become really efficient and very culture. Marketing costs. This is karma. Two to four percent. That's to maintain. Low, lower, the lower the number, generally the more stable the company. Generally, everything's in general. You know, I mean, there's no black and white here, guys. The higher the number, the more aggressive the company, the more growth the company is probably seeing. You know, which is which is weird because you might say, hey, look, we, we want to drive to what is that? Four point two million. So what's four percent of that? What's five percent of that even? And then you beat that number and it ends up that when it's the five percent at all, we still spent three. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the, it, it, it's, it's a guy, it's, it's, it's a sliding scale. And I'm going to back up here real fast, guys. So Saul uh, <coughs> earlier yesterday, I think, was talking about the, the four buckets, the 100%. So let's understand this. That's 45% of 100, right? So that your total revenue, we're saying, hey, let's take 45% of that total revenue. And it's going to Home Depot. That's the easy way to say this. We're taking it to Home Depot, and here you go. We're going to do our job now, right? Uh, what was before that? The revenue? And then we, we hire people and we say, hey, we can't, we can't just go to Home Depot and that's it. We have to build the fence. So we have to hire people. So now we're at 45 plus 12, let's say. That's what, 57? So now we're at 57%. So now already we have 43% to play with. Where is that going to go? Well, out of the 43%, let's take uh, 3%, send it to. Can I still pay off the system? Yeah. Yeah, I'm late because of you, but come on. Uh, <laughs> come on, come on. All right. So listen, you're basing that on those logos that yeah. I had up there before. Hold on, hold on. Oh, check it, check it. Hey, I'm going to work for this, bro. So there's. <laughs> so, so this is. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, you're awesome analysis, right? So, but the logos that he had up there before is primarily based on those guys, right? Uh, and those, most of those guys work with us, and I know their situations. So these are solid, established companies that are killing it, right? So it depends on where you are in the journey. If you're further in the journey, you're more successful. That is an absolutely great range. If you're not at that level of the journey you're trying to get there, those numbers can Easily, easily, even more than double. So, so just know that it, it depends on where you are in there. Would you consider uh, your SEO services as marketing costs? Absolutely. Vehicle yeah. racks, uh, little signs for the kids, uh, commercial. Great. Drop signs. Upstairs, fireplace. Feel free to trade. We're doing a sign swap. Upstairs. And if you want, so just take them. Yeah, there you go. Oh, 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 no, no. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Gross margin. Uh, you know, we talked about figuring the overhead out, and, and we're going to do the budget for you. Uh, it seems like it always comes close to this number, where there's Sometimes we see 35, 36, 37. Like the really, really big companies, we see 45, 47, 50. Gross margin, what is that? That's my revenue of the job, that's my $50,000 job, minus my Home Depot bill, minus the guy that I had to pay the roof that's, 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 that's where that comes from. Revenue, materials, direct labor, gross margin. <laughs> sometimes we're putting around, sometimes we're finishing, depending on how you want to do it. Uh, two feet, all right, Sales versus production. 
one to one. Uh, I threw this in there. This is something that we like to do. So sales pipeline. Uh, this is this is elementary. I understand. Uh, but sales need to not only feel the work. Sales need to replenish the work. So every week, Jackson Fence, we have a meeting, sales meeting, and what we look at. Uh, any given week, it's, it's, it's not, you don't have a good picture, right? Like, you have awesome weeks, you have not awesome weeks, you have to get in overall. And so we are always looking at a rolling, I call it a rolling four-week period. Uh, not a month, but a rolling four weeks. So basically what we do is, we got a spreadsheet, the stuff that's pulled us out, and we kind of kick it off and start pulling this other information up, right? And what we're doing is we're preparing how much we soak, We'll also figure out how much we produce. Because at the end of the day, sales don't really mean a whole lot at all. People are like, hey man, we're, 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 we got a record here. We sold more fence than ever before. And it's like, well, how much can we put in the ground? Because you can't collect on fence if you've not built. And so it doesn't really mean a whole lot if you sold it. It means a lot more if you've actually put it in the ground. You know? And so what we're always doing is we're taking this four week snapshot of both the production side. Week one, two, three, four, this much, this much, this much, this much total. And we're also taking the four weeks of sales. And what we want to see is the sales are out performing the production always. When when that number, the sales number is lower than the production number, that's an indicator that we're gonna have a look. We've got a problem ahead, you know. Uh, and if that continues too long, we could we could very well well run out of work, you know. So I want to see a one to one, if not better, you know. Uh, now, how much better? I don't want my sales team ever to sell twice as much work than I can produce. I mean, yeah, I'll take the man every week, don't even wrong. I'll take a good month. But if we spend that out, out over a period of time, if my, if my crews are capable of putting in $80,000 fence every week, I don't see it beneficial that we're selling $160,000 every week. Then that would be a little backlog, you know? And so what I would say we need to do is we need to, need to figure out how to produce more fence, or we need to figure out how to charge a little bit more and still build the same amount of fence. You know what I mean? So there's a there's a there's a ratio there. You don't want your production to outrun your sales team, you don't want your sales team to outrun your production. You want them to run, in my mind, parallel. Sales team a little bit heavier, but that's how you grow. Oh, that's the uh tip of the edit. Yeah. That's all I got. Thank you guys.